This video turned into a whole different thing. Oh my gosh, my brain hurts. I originally wanted to share with you guys how to do a bunch of research so that you can eventually end up in front of casting directors for Netflix shows. But then I got a email for an open casting call for a an amazing show. I love that show on Netflix for their season two. And now I'm just like, okay, I might as well just say all three ways that I know of. So today I'm going to tell you the three ways that I know you can audition for a Netflix show, whether it's a Netflix original or, you know, something that ends up on Netflix because uh, it was picked up by Netflix to be hosted on their platform. And my on Netflix? Mm, no, <laughs> I wouldn't say so. I'm not in a speaking role on Netflix, so I'm going to say no. Do I want to be on Netflix, specifically a Netflix original show? Duh. I'm an actress and I like acting and I have bills to pay. Hi, my name is Belgica and I'm an actress based in California. And I get the question all of the time in my comments of how can I apply to be on Netflix? How can I audition to be on Netflix? And I am assuming you mean a Netflix original show. The first one, of course, and you should already know, is uh, have an agent submit you because they are going to be able to have access to more breakdown, to more auditions. Most casting calls that are posted online are sent directly to talent representatives. So the casting director will have a breakdown of what they're looking for, send it to the casting um, representatives versus sending it to them and the talent because there are a lot of people that self-submit online. Um, they don't want to receive 10,000 uh you know, submissions for one character, which is why I did not expect the show that I'm going to tell you guys about to be on a platform and be distributed to a bunch of people, be an open call. I, I really didn't think that season two of the show was going to have an open call, which is why I was doing all of this research. Anyway, so of course, that's the first way. Having an agent will get you the most opportunities to audition, and it's for sure a numbers game. You have to be right for the uh, the character that they're looking for. You have to meet the specs and be talented, of course, in order to get cast in those shows. And the more audition opportunities you have, the more probability it is that you might get cast. Because if you are self-submitting and you're only able to self-submit to two roles a year, um, it's likely you're never going to end up on Netflix because it's just not enough versus if your agent is sending you a hundred different um, TV and film auditions in a year, then you're more likely to, you know, you're getting more experience auditioning and people are taking a look at you. And if they see you again and again, and they like you, they might remember you for a future project. So of course, the more you audition, the more shows you will be able to book or hopefully at least book one one day. The second way is what I was doing, the research that I was doing. So you need to be knowledgeable about who is doing what in the industry and you can end up on Netflix in a Netflix original show by auditioning for a big show like Stranger Things, but there are also a lot of other shows that get created that aren't originally, um, you know, for Netflix. They're creating this independently and then they might be pitching it to Netflix. See who is creating really great films and audition for those people. Learn about filmmakers, learn about casting directors. Even if you are a marketable actor and you don't know where to market yourself, you're not gonna be able to get in front of big casting directors for example, Carla Hall. And you can start your research as simple as looking at the credits of that TV show or that film. And then from the credits, you can take it to IMDb and learn more about that casting company, that casting director or that actor. And IMDb Pro specifically will show you who people are represented by. So you can look on Wikipedia and find some of this information, but the industry standard is IMDb Pro, and that's where you're going to be getting so much information. For example, me, I am Latina, I am based out of California, and I'm bilingual, my first language was Spanish, I am an immigrant, and I would love to do more shows where my culture is represented, where I can experience more of me through other people's texts. All this research is going to help you in figuring out who to even start submitting to because there are so many talent agents and managers, representatives in LA that it, it's really overwhelming. You want to find resources from different, uh, you want to find different places that tell you that this manager or talent agent is good, is legit, isn't going to screw you over. So. It's nice to have an IMDb Pro account because then you can go and see who all of their clients are. And the third way to get an audition to be on Netflix is of course self-submissions, but this is the least likely way that you will be able to get 
eventually get on Netflix because like I mentioned in the beginning, most of these big auditions are going to be sent directly to the talent reps because it's just going to be so much easier for everybody. But every once in a while, there are the rare occasions where they post a bunch of open casting calls for big shows that you can submit to on your own. For example, today I actually auditioned for Hentified. I self-submitted for Hentified because they put uh, some sides, some breakdowns on casted talent and they didn't put a deadline. And I read the FAQs for casted talent and it says that if they don't put a deadline, it's because they're just going to take it away whenever they are ready for it. So if you're watching this today in January and you are able to find the site still on there, then that means it's open. If you can't find it on Casted Talent, then that means they're gone. Um, but you can create a free profile by going on Casted, clicking on the Facebook, um, create a free pro profile. You can find all of this on the, their FAQs. But you can also submit for Gentified. Right now, as far as I have seen, they are looking for... A few Latinas in their 20s, 30s, I saw a Filipi Filipina role and another male role that I didn't read the sites for. But as of today, January 28th, which is when I saw all of these casting calls, um, they are accepting people. So that's a way that you can go and submit to, which is crazy to me. That show is so big and well known that I'm just really surprised that they're actually doing a big open casting call for it. So I suggest that you go and do that right now if you if it's still in the right timeline check it out and see if it's there because they are likely to be starting filming really soon um i submitted my audition already and i wanted to say this to you because if you're a latina like me there's not a lot of shows like these that really represent our culture and are such so much fun to watch and see i don't know like relate to a show so much if you are going to be self-submitting, I highly, highly suggest that you memorize the lines and do your self-tape today or tomorrow. Send it in as soon as possible because they're obviously going to be getting a lot of submissions and um, you should be one of them. I hope you found this helpful and in the future, whenever I have some more information for you guys or another open casting call that I can share with you, of course, I will um, make a video about it. If you have any questions about Cast It Talent, they have a great FAQ. I also made a video about Cast It. And during my research, I found out that Annie has a YouTube channel. So I'm going to feature her today. Uh, and if you would like to be featured on my next video, make sure you're subscribed, like this video and leave me a comment.